Mortal Kombat fans appear to be literal sorcerers, able to manifest their basest desires into reality. Everyone knows how they made Melina a part of MK11, but they've been known to materialise new characters out of literal nothing for decades. So let's go back to the beginning and see if we can untangle this yarn ball of a cannon. Welcome to Cannonball. The original instance of this was with Ermac. In MK1's audit menu, beneath Reptile Battles, a listing for Ermax is present. Given its proximity to the secret fighter listing, and with the rumours of a glitch that turned Scorpion's outfit red circulating around the time, similar to how Reptile was a green Scorpion recolour, many believed this was a second secret boss. Such rumours persisted through MK2's lifespan and into the MK3 series. When the ninjas came back for Ultimate MK3, the team decided to make Ermac into a real character as a fun nod to the community misconception. With Ermac now real, fans could rest easy knowing they had everything they wanted. Except that Rain guy in the attract mode, what was that about? Rain isn't really an example of this, but people will mention it if I don't. Rain was a fake character created for the UMK3 intro to make people play more to find him. Wait, that's illegal. He became real in Homeport and MK Trilogy. MK2's The Pit 2 features a pair of combatants in the background that fans latched onto pretty quickly. They were a green-clad Liu Kang and a burning Liu Kang, and fans gave them the nicknames Hornbuckle and Torch, the former coming from one of the SNES version's cryptic hints as a nod to Lian Hornbuckle, who is thanked in that version's credits. Given the other hints referencing Ermac and Kano, the latter of whom has a fake counter in this game's audit menu, it made sense for fans to think this was another secret fighter, but nothing ever came of him. But come Deadly Alliance, Blaze was introduced. Blaze was intended to be Torch, renamed for obvious legal reasons, but once his character was fleshed out, it became impossible for the two to be the same from a story standpoint. Still, fans crafted lore for Hornbuckle based around Blaze's story as a slave of Onaga's followers, making him one of the latter. Newer versions of the Pit 2 regularly feature Blaze or another Burning Man in the background, but Hornbuckle has been replaced by the likes of Rain and is unlikely to become real anytime soon. Maybe when Onaga makes his return? Fans were pretty chill until 2006 when Midway released this wallpaper for the then upcoming MK Armageddon. The wallpaper featured everyone who had ever been playable or fightable in a mainline MK. Except Motaro, Chameleon and Chameleon. And Meat. Who is Meat? MK4 had a bloody skeleton model used for certain fatalities. Prior games used a single sprite for this, but in 3D games, you need a full model rigged to an animation skeleton. And at that point, you might as well have some fun with it, so the team included a method to use this model in place of your character's model. He was presented as an actual character in strategy guides for MK4 and Gold, even though the game itself treats him more as a costume. Still, the team and game files supposedly called him Meat, and that may have influenced fans latching onto him. When fans demanded his inclusion in Armageddon, the team just took Draman's model, tweaked and recolored it, and said Meat now had muscles. And that was enough to make the fans settle down. I guess the fandom was more chill in those days. In a similar vein to Ermac, rumour of a female Red Ninja also circulated, starting around MK2's release. But it didn't receive nearly as much attention. Come MK9, the team decided to make her a real character. They even used the age-old fan nickname Scarlet. Her backstory was even constructed to complement Ermax as a nod to their similar real-world origins, and the existence of classic skins allowed her and Ermax to be playable in forms reminiscent of their supposed origins. So with Scarlet checked off, fans were quick to find a new dumb meme to latch onto and demand unusually respectfully for this fandom. Tremor had always had a bit of a weird following since his debut in MK Special Forces. He was just a basic male ninja, but buff and in brown. I think it was just people wanting the full set of male ninja colours since we had yellow, blue, green, grey, black, red and purple, and orange was commonly repped by Scorpion, so brown and pink were pretty much all that was left, and you'd never find someone openly asking for a pink male ninja in those days because gay or something. I believe I recall some fans wanting Tremor in Armageddon on the Midway forums at the time, but not enough to make it happen. But with the Scarlet Demanders and the Meat Requesters backing them, Tremor got a nod in the Vita port of MK9, where he appeared in the exclusive challenge tower added for that version. He then became fully manifest in MKX's DLC, 15 years after his original debut. He even made it into an animated movie as the sub-boss. Ah, the power of fans who promptly forgot about him after his first nerf and moved on to the next one. The current focus of this kind of attention is Hydro. Hydro was a character created for the Malibu comic series in 1994. He was Sub-Zero's partner on the mission to kill Shang Tsung, and he was killed by Scorpion in the fourth issue. Despite this minimal screen time, fans started recreating him in fan games and Mugen, but that was just for the hardcores. Where he went more mainstream was when, in 2011, needing an opponent for the newly cyberized Sector and Cyrax in the season 1 finale of MK Legacy, Kevin Tankeron and crew used Hydro, which was a name mega fans would get a kick out of. And this seems to be where the current hype started, but remained mostly dark until Scarlet and Tremor made it in. Hydro has since been referenced in a tower consumable in MK11, and Rain has a number of blue skins that can be easily used to make a Hydro variation. 
I think the thing holding him back is that, since his debut, Rain was introduced and given Aquamancy abilities, making Hydro redundant. His only chance of getting in is as a cyborg, possibly replacing Smoke and Sub-Zero in the main trio. But then, like Sector and Cyrax, fans will demand a human version, and then complain when he replaces Rain to avoid redundancy. Amusingly, the Malibu comics had both an Aquamancy-wielding ninja, and a character called Rain, before Rain the Aquamancy ninja was ever created. But after Hydro gets in, who's next? What about Belloc, the unused demon character from MK Gold? Maybe some of the unused Deadly Alliance characters? Nah, knowing our luck, it'll be Cole Young or Vera Briggs or something. God, or Chrome. Remember, it's never something cool or interesting the fans latch onto. It's something stupid or so minimal as to barely even be a concept, like Jackie. If you liked this video, then please watch my non-MK content so it doesn't completely bomb. If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is the Realmcast interview with Charles Marshall, the writer of the Malibu comics and the creator of Hydro. I guarantee that Netherrealm will not consult with this man and will instead make Hydro just some jobber who loses to everyone. Tis the Netherrealm way.